Hey there YouTube, this is SGM 436 and as you can see by the overhead uh, cam, hi there. Uh, basically, uh, I have two repairs today. Um, I'm only going to do one of them in this video and the other one in the other. So I have two 3DSs, uh, one is an OG one and the other one's the, uh, the new 3DS XL, the very confusing naming scheme that Nintendo gave it. Anyway, uh, these are both um, sent in by my sister's uh, boyfriend actually. And they have two different problems. This guy, um, the face buttons don't work for some odd reason, but everything else works. So I'm pretty sure I just need to clean off or replace or do something with the uh, the membrane pad underneath there. The second one uh, is this guy. Um, I tested it out and I think like just about all the buttons don't work. Um, the only buttons that work, I believe, are the face buttons and the home button. And everything else does absolutely nothing. So... This might be tougher to fix. Oh yeah, and the touch screen doesn't work on this guy. So I'm going to pop it open. Hopefully it does not have water damage. Uh, but going to have to see because just a lot of things don't work on this, which is very odd. But it boots up just fine. So who knows? Anyway, I'll take a look at this uh, in the next video. For this one, let's just do the easy fix first. So I'm going to get this guy open. Just uh, undo the four screws to get the battery door off. Okay, battery, I always just check this just to be sure. Battery's not puffed up, good. <laughs> you can never tell, you can never be too careful. Anyway, so there's just a couple screws uh, pretty much in all these little holes and um, probably a good idea to keep them separate. I think they're all the same size, but uh, just keep them separate just in case. And finally, do not forget the screw in the cart slot there. Now, we set it down, work our fingernail around it. Make sure there's no SD card. Also, that's another thing. Uh, actually, yeah, it doesn't matter. You can leave the SD card in good. But yeah, work your fingernail kind of around the perimeter. And uh, just be careful. Lift it open like a book. Do not pull uh, because there are two ribbon cables for the shoulder buttons. And if you break those, you will need to replace them. There you go, it's open. So what we are going to need to do is um, first, let's get the uh, joy pad off, the uh, circle pad, whatever you want to call it, joystick. Uh, basically two screws and then a ribbon underneath there for the uh, flex cable. Okay, and do not lose the uh, plastic discs. Get your fingernail in there very carefully, lift it up just slightly, and then get the ribbon out of there. And I like to push the contacts back down the little latch so it doesn't accidentally get broken while you're doing something else. So next, I've opened this before actually, so I'm um, gonna take the card out. So it is loose. Um, but usually you have to pry. There's double stick tape keeping the SD card board down. Uh, but first step is always remove the two screws underneath the uh, card slot. Now, this would normally be kind of hard to do because of this double stick tape, but like I said, I opened this before to repair something else for him, and... Um, so this is already loose. So that was pretty easy. Now, there's gonna be two black screws underneath the um, where the SD card is. Uh, one here, and one here through the metal. So now, we have four silver screws. One here, here, and here, here. Just pretty much uh, supporting the uh, face buttons. And on this other side is where we are going to find the actual face buttons themselves. Okay, things to be careful of. The microphone here, uh, you are going to need to carefully pull it out of the, uh, there's a little rubber sock on it and it goes into the case. Just pull that out slightly so it's still connected, but you can get it out of the way. 
And let's see, yeah, the board's pretty much loose now. Now, there are a number, uh, three actually, ribbons connecting to the top half. So we're just going to have to be careful. And um, you can actually put your finger, open it slightly, put your finger on the touchscreen and gently push it out. Now, there is another ribbon uh, going for the Wi-Fi. So just going to move that out of the way. Just totally lift off the, um, the Wi-Fi card just so I can get access to it. And the volume control, just sort of wiggle out there. And there. So you want to be super careful about um, this area here, uh, not to flex uh, the ribbon cables for the top half too much. So you can see the, um, the buttons or something. But I'm going to open this up. It looks like there's some kind of um, corrosion or something going on there. So I'm just going to use tweezers and lift up the uh, membrane and remove the buttons and clean underneath them. Here, fingernail is probably safer. Okay, so it took a little bit of finagling and you can see there's actually liquid damage. Um, something got in here. It looks like it might be soda or coffee and you can see the difference. Uh, one side's shiny here and then the rest is like black. So that's why the buttons aren't working. It's not actually mechanical. It's there's a film of non-conductive material dried on there, caked on there, preventing the button from actually being red. So let me grab some Q-tips and some isopropyl and we'll clean that off, as well as the bottom of the domes. Okay, so got some isopropyl here. Just give these a clean. I might actually have to scrub, especially this one bun's really dirty. Looks like whatever got in here chemically reacted with the metal. So yeah, look at that. Yeah, this is going to take some elbow grease. Top and bottom buns aren't as bad, but the ones on the sides here, jeez. Might actually have to use something stronger than isopropyl, something like a chemical contact cleaner. So, yeah, look at that. It looks, I don't know, something like coffee or soda. Anyway, let me scrub on this, um, and then I'll get back to you guys after it's uh, nice and clean. Okay, so I cleaned them off as best as I could. And I stuck the film back down. It's not great, but it'll be pressed by the top case. Um, but if you're really worried about it, you could put a very thin layer of, uh, of tape down. But we're going to make sure that this um, Wi-Fi antenna cable is seated back into the frame properly. Uh, there are basically little grooves all along the uh, plastic that it goes into. You can just use your fingernail uh, to coerce it back in there. basically get it around where the mic is. And then we're just gonna swing this back down, plug in the, uh, the Wi-Fi card, and then there's a two little metal fingers that are soldered in that you can use to, to get the antenna in place. Just make sure it doesn't get in the way of the microphone. Put the microphone back in, and uh, we're gonna make sure that the volume control is uh, in the correct orientation. Okay. So basically we're gonna reassemble it in reverse. So pretty much everything that I said before in terms of screws to undo and whatnot, we're just gonna do the reverse of. So let's just speed through this. Before we get too far though, we just wanna check that the button presses feel roughly normal, that everything's located uh, at least remotely in the correct placement. Okay, let's continue. Now, putting this ribbon in is 
probably the most fiddly thing. Um, make sure that the latch is up. Very thin pair of tweezers helps. And there we go. Make sure that the disc is lined up vertically. And make sure that these little spacers, the or at least remotely correct. Okay. You should just click right on. Okay, be super careful with these. I've accidentally broken um, these little ribbons for the shoulder buttons before, and it is not fun having to wait for replacement ones to come in. And they're really fragile, so, okay. I'm just gonna just put the back on and grab the battery and do a quick test before we screw everything together. So make sure, as long as we didn't undo the ribbon for the top screen area, this should be perfectly fine. Okay. Okay, it seems like the, um, I can just start something up, activity log. A works. Okay. X works. Let's see. B works. Y works. Right works. Left works. Power works. Okay, so all the buttons work now. So let's just uh, finish screwing this together and we'll be home free. Okay, now I'll just grab my 3DS, pull out a game, just make sure that that works as well. Turn it on, start up the game, and once I confirm that, we're all good to go. Now, while we're waiting for that, I actually did end up using some of this um, uh, Puretronics Extra Strength Contact Cleaner and uh, just sprayed this onto the end of a uh, Q-tip. You can see it basically just ate through most of the corrosion and the rest I had to actually scrape off using the end of these tweezers because it was really badly corroded. Uh, so, you can see everything works. Let's just start up Pokemon Sapphire. So once I can get into the menu, I can already see there's some kind of sticky water damage up here too. So yeah. So there you go. Volume works. 3D works. Well, I can see it. You can't. But uh, yeah. Let's just start up a game. Yeah, all the buttons work. So yeah, there we go. We are good to go. And I can um, give this guy back. And um, next time, we'll look at uh, this guy, which should be a hopefully not too difficult to fix, but a more interesting problem, I would say. But yeah, if you guys are interested, um, I did another video in the past where I um, I fixed a broken uh, power connector on um, on actually the same model of, uh, from a number of years ago. So if you guys are interested, uh, you can look up the 3DS um, charge port repair video that I did. But no, yeah, if you guys have the same problem where there's maybe a liquid spill and your buttons are no longer responding, uh, you can actually open it up fairly easily and uh, clean off the liquid damage as long as it didn't spread too far or eat through too much of the metal. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.